Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I'm Justin with you with a new haircut and a new beard trim, ready to look at some more new stuff in Blender 2.8. Um, so uh, you've probably seen my series uh, so far that's uh, just me kind of learning as I go. I was going to put out a couple more videos with me just kind of discovering things, but then I thought, Psh, why just waste the time doing that when I could actually make a proper introduction or tutorial? So that's what this uh, is, or the next few videos are going to be. And this one is going to be all about Blender's new bugs. Now I'm going to go over uh, uh, several important bugs. And the reason I'm starting with the bugs is because uh, so that you can know them right away and not have them trip you up as you're editing and um, also because they're not really that apparent. So let's get started with Blender 2.8's new video editing bugs. And the first and most important bug is the audio doesn't update when closing a gap with backspace. And so I'm gonna show you what I mean here. Um, so here's a strip from my previous uh, video series. And um, I'm just going to make a, an arbitrary cut here. You can see the audio here. Point accuracy to the exact frame. So I'm just going to cut from here and then I'm going to take these and I'm just going to slide those and we're just going to cut here to here. So if I play this, you don't hear anything. And then when you come back up here, now you can hear. So there's audio over here and there's audio and over mining. here. Now, what happens is if I hit backspace to close that gap and that'll happen if you don't have anything on any of the channels in that gap if there's something above or below in that gap you won't be able to backspace and close that well not all the way to the um, strip that we just did here so now that we've closed that gap let's see what it sounds like oh and there is no audio so what I originally thought was happening was that it just, the audio just disappeared, but that's actually not the case. If I keep playing it, you can see the audio comes in right here. And well, why is that? And this is really tricky and this is why I wanted to cover it first. So I was going along, I was backspacing and editing and I was coming over here and uh, seeing what I had and I was looking at my audio and I noticed that I was making sound Right here, you can see this gap. There should be no sound here. Well, there's sound right there. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? And then I realized, oh, I'm out of sync. And I thought, why am I out of sync? And then I came over to the beginning and I thought, well, let me look at the beginning. And I was like, oh, what? There's no sound at the beginning. And then I realized that when I backspaced, basically the audio just doesn't recognize me closing that gap. And so this, the reason there's no sound here is because that's where that gap was and then it picks up right here because it thinks that the audio starts right here uh, which is what it originally did now the video is just fine but the audio is uh not updating so to get around that um let's see i don't think control r works refreshing this no so refreshing the sequencer doesn't work but what does work is if you take the audio hide it and then unhide it and now, work some of nasty and now it should be just like normal. So now this is a little annoying because basically what I usually do when I'm editing is I'll take this and I'll be cutting here and then I'll drag this like this and then I'll backspace and then I'll play it and then, oh, nothing happens. Okay, so I have to hide, unhide real quick and then keep going. Um, so since I have these two selected already, I can just quick hide and unhide it, but it is an extra step and it can get a little annoying. Um, so hopefully they fix that soon. But it is a quick fix, and as long as you're aware that that's happening, uh, this is a very easy solution. Okay, new bug number two is that the audio waveform disappears when you're adjusting the offsets. And what I mean by offsets is over here um, on the strip tab in the time properties, if you start adjusting, I think it only is the hold offset for now, but it could be any of these. But basically, um, let me zoom in here, see what's happening, is if I start adjusting the hold offset, you can see that that audio disappears. Um, now, sometimes it comes back and sometimes it doesn't. And I think it just depends on how long you hold it for. Oh, m maybe not. See, so sometimes it comes back. But um, let's see if I, oh, let's do the end. There we go. Yep. So now I'm adjusting the end. So I kind of adjusted both of these 
and now we have no waveform. Now, we still have the audio, but we just don't have the waveform display, and that is affecting um, any strip that has the same audio source. So it's not just the one that you uh, change the offsets for. Now I tried uh, refreshing with control R, refreshing the sequencer, that didn't work. I tried hiding it and unhiding it, that didn't work. Um, now you could uh, control Z to undo, and then I think that does work, but depending on how far you go, you might not wanna you know, undo that many times. So what you can do is you can save it. So control S, so I saved it down here, uh, new bugs uh, 0102. And then if I come up to file, open recent, and then click the first one here, new bugs 0102. And then what that does is it will refresh all of that audio. I don't know why I have to do it like that, but there's your solution. So again, a bit annoying, but a pretty easy fix. Next up, bug number three, which is slow playback and scrubbing, especially on cuts or uh, effects strips. So, for example, right here, if I hit play, that's kind of cool. I mean, you can see the duration of your strip. You can see, um, you know. Now look at that. It played semi okay until it got here, and then you could still hear me because I have AV sync on, but it stopped. And it paused for a second, and then all of a sudden it jumped over here. And you can see that with that cache here, that uh, salmon colored or dirty orange or whatever, whatever. But yeah, that is really annoying because a lot of times you want to see what your cuts uh, to see if the cuts line up. So I'm going to type 191, enter, and boom, I am right at... And that is really slow. And that didn't even come in until over here. So this is a huge problem. And... From my understanding, it's maybe being worked on now, and they're trying to get it to play back better. But in the meantime, here is the solution. So um, what you're going to want to do is go to the proxy and cache tab over here and make sure cache final is checked. You can also go up to here, view uh, cache, make sure show cache is on, and then check final images. And then come over to one of your cuts and zoom in and then I'm gonna do control R to refresh to refresh that cache there and now I'm just going to hit the right arrow on my keyboard and as I hit that right arrow it's gonna pause a little bit right on that cut but you can see that that uh, cache is solid so now that that cache is solid you only have to do that over that cut come back over here and then press play. I mean, you can see the duration of your strip. You can and it's now smooth right over that cut. Even though it might be choppy other places, you can see how that cut is going to line up. Duration of your strip. You can see, um, you know, where it is in the scene, and you can see uh, the playhead. And right. And see, I've I paused it like five, six, seven seconds uh, before it finally stopped. Um, so that's a really big problem. Um, it could just be my machine, but I think that um, just generally speaking, it's a problem in Blender um, and it has been for a while. So uh, same thing here, you can see I have the speed control and speed controls are usually really slow. So let's see what, let's see what it's gonna be like now. But, yeah. So that's really slow. Look at that. It's just oh, like really okay. choppy. So this is a little interesting. Now in order to make this um, And then I hit pause. Control, I actually did hard cuts here. And it's still going. Okay. So that is just super annoying. Um but again, the solution is the same. So um here and right arrow to go forward and this goes a lot slower over the speed control. But if I just keep, you can actually just hold your arrow down, but just keep in mind that if you hold your arrow down, once you release it, it's gonna still recognize that it's uh, pressed down and it's gonna go all the way until whenever it thinks that you released it. So uh, kind of just does what it wants there. So yeah, see, so now it's still going because it's still recognizing my keystroke. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
So you got to be careful with that. Careful with holding it down. Okay, so there, there it stopped. I'm gonna come back over here. Oh, good, it didn't, um, it didn't recycle my cache yet right here. So now, if I want to look at this uh, speed control, I can hit play, and this is exactly what it's gonna look like when it's rendered. So. So as tedious as that is, it actually saves you a little bit more time than um, setting the start and end frames, rendering that out, and opening it up in a video player. So yes, depending on your system and what it's running at the time, this could be uh, extremely slow for you. Another thing to know that might help is if you go to Edit and Preferences and down to System, uh, the sequencer cache limit here, you can adjust that. So uh, if you make that lower, it'll uh, use fewer system resources. Um, and so if you have other things going on in the background, that could speed up your blender. Okay, bug number four, the last bug, and that is the system doesn't recognize uh, when you're pausing, playing and pausing on a video very well. And you've kind of already seen that where I hit play, and then when I hit pause, it uh, doesn't pause. Now it's doing it now, but uh, sometimes uh, you have to hit pause several times for it to recognize that it's being paused. Now, if you're um, over a, an image or if you're over a color strip or just over audio, it seems to work just fine. But s over video, sometimes it's really glitchy. So there you go, those are the four new bugs that come with Blender 2.8 in the Video Sequence Editor, and now you know what they are and how to avoid them.